Hi, everyone. I assume uh, you can hear me. It looks like the uh, indicator is lighting up. Uh, hi, I'm Eric Anderson. I'm a engineer on the Microsoft Edge team. Wanted to talk a bit about time travel debugging with Chromium. Uh, so first of all, what is time travel uh, debugging? Uh, gave a link in the slide deck to an overview on the Microsoft Docs site if you want to review some more public documentation on it. Uh, but in a nutshell, it's a way to trace the execution of your process. Uh, and afterwards, you end up with a trace file that you can load into the Windows debugger and basically go forwards or backwards, setting breakpoints, um, stepping forwards um, or you know, backwards. So basically, very heavyweight process. It records code execution and the data uh, for the process. Essentially, every uh, instruction executed is captured supports multi-threading. Um, I, I know this is similar to RR. I don't have any personal direct hands-on experience with RR, but I, I believe there's a little bit of a, a delta there in terms of, I think RR is uh, kind of simulates a single process or a single CPU, uh, while TTD is you know, a little more uh, closer to you know, actual execution, which can be interesting for multi-threaded uh, races. Uh, and you can attach it after the process starts. Um, so like I mentioned, tracing very heavyweight. Traces can grow very large very quickly. Um, you know, sometimes I've taken a trace that's maybe a minute long. And if the process was doing enough things, you might end up with a trace that's like 20 gigs. Uh, it can handle that. Uh, but typically, what you want to do is uh, just like you would with uh, you know, any other um, thing that you're trying to step through in a debugger is try to limit the complexity of the repro if you can. Um, hopefully you have a reduced repro. You know, if it is only live site, that's okay too. Uh, and then um, other thing to note, you know, I, I think anyone with debugger experience uh, has run into this from time to time. Um, you know, it is possible with how heavyweight it is, uh, it can affect timing enough that uh, a race condition might go away. In some cases, it might actually show up more. Uh, it's really just timing dependent. Um, so getting started, um, the way to actually use this uh, is, I, I know folks are generally familiar with uh, using the Windows SDK to get uh, WinDebug, but the public version uh, that has uh, the time travel debugging facility built into it is called WinDebug Preview. Uh, you can download it via the, the Windows Store. You don't need to be signed in or logged in uh, with a Microsoft account or anything. It should just download uh, just fine. Uh, and then, um, you know, obviously following public docs might seem intuitive and natural, but it turns out tracing Chromium, uh, you know, kind of has some caveats where it's just not going to work um, out of the box. Um, so the first is uh, the way it injects into the process isn't compatible with the Chromium sandbox. Luckily, uh, Chromium has a no sandbox switch, uh, which gets us past that. Um, the other one, which isn't always super intuitive, uh, is Chromium typically doesn't support running in an elevated context. Um, but uh, WinDebug, when you're trying to use the time travel debugging facility, wants you uh, to be running elevated. Uh, so you, you kind of need to be um, a little creative, which is you know, attach after the process is uh, created. Um, I see Christian mentioning elevated does work. Um, I, I think you know it's possible there's certain flows uh, where um, you know, it may, may actually work fine. Um, I typically recommend running uh, Chromium um, from a normal process uh, as a normal user otherwise. Um, and then uh, the other uh, thing I wanted to note um, is uh, you know, another Chromium specific tip, which is you know, we mentioned the attach uh, after launching, uh, and luckily with the, the browser task manager, you can kind of pretty quickly um, track down which process you're likely interested in, in terms of a uh, specific renderer process or utility process. And then if you're concerned about catching some flow that happens fairly early in the lifetime, um, there's quite a few built-in startup dialogue switches, uh, which I'll kind of demo uh, here live in a moment, um, or right now. Um, so. Uh, you know, we kind of mentioned a couple things. So let me bring up a instance of uh, WinDebug. Uh, I think this is, you know, official branding is WinDebug Preview. Um, 
you know, there's the attach to process uh, option and you can actually see, oops, I uh, didn't run elevated. Um, so let me close that out and relaunch uh, elevated. Um, so now it says administrator um, and we can attach to a process. Um, so I am not yet running uh, the thing I want to run. So let me bring up a command prompt and we'll use two of those things I mentioned um, a moment ago, which is uh, no sandbox uh, well, injection. And then uh, the specific thing I'm going to demo here uh, in part because you know there's tends to be less code running in it uh, should result in a smaller trace. Uh, is we'll uh, debug the network uh, service process. Um, so launch that. Um, and we can kind of see right away, um, you know, utility processes are getting spun up. Um, which one is it? I can, you know, either via the menu uh, for uh, task manager there. Um, so we wanted the, the network service. That's 25944. Um, I'm going to have to hit refresh here, but once I do that, there it is. Um, I'm going to hit record with time travel debugging. Uh, this will ask me where I want to save it. Uh, any old place that you can remember is fine. Uh, make sure you delete the trace afterwards if you're low on disk. Uh, and then, um, you know, at this point, the process isn't really doing much. You know, it's just going to pop this uh, message. Uh, so we'll want to dismiss. Um, all of them, including uh, the network uh, service process. You know, if we cross-reference this one, this one is uh, the storage service, um, so on and so forth. Uh, click, click. Uh, and then why don't we just go to uh, Wikipedia? And you can kind of see uh, CPU usage is through the roof on the network service just because of the overhead of time travel uh, debugging uh, tracer. Uh, and two options. One is I could just close the process, uh, and that would stop the trace. Or if you hit stop in the bug, uh, that's just going to terminate uh, the process. Uh, so we'll do that. Um, and then, you know, since I really don't have, or actually, I guess mildly interesting note is, you know, Chromium uh, with its multi-process architecture, pretty good at spinning back up, uh, you know, the network service. Uh, so it's in a separate process. So the browser is still usable. Um, but um, don't really need it anymore. So I'll close that out. Um, so we have a trace. You can see it's just a, a dot run file. Um, if we wanted to look at how to load this, um, you know, either at a later point uh, or uh, on another machine, you know, we can also just do open trace file, uh, or if you do open dump file and just change the filter, um, that's fine too. Um, and we can see it, you know, loaded Chrome 06 dot run. Um, so there's a few just kind of standard Windows debugging things, which is, you know, first of all, you're going to want to make sure um, your symbols are set up. Um, so normally, if this was like a local build, uh, you know, you just make sure the debugger uh, is pointed to your, um, you know, out and, you know, architecture release folder. Uh, but since I just picked a Chromium Canary build, uh, it should be on the public symbol server. Um, and you know, this would work with stable or any other uh, Chrome uh, channel. Uh, and then yeah, I can check, uh, and we have Chrome symbols loaded. It's deferred. Um, so I might um, you know, kind of want to pick an arbitrary symbol, kind of, um, you know, not sure how familiar folks are with Windowbug. Uh, yeah, you can do it the X command with a wildcard, uh, you know, pattern if, if you want, uh, or uh, in this case, uh, I'm doing a um, pattern match breakpoint uh, for that. So at the bottom here, we see um, yeah, the symbols we're loading. Um, yeah, this is always the interesting uh, thing with live debugging is how quickly your symbol is going to load and, and uh, breakpoints resolve. Uh, hopefully not too, too bad. I, I do have a pull it out of the oven um, trace from uh, earlier if this doesn't respond super quickly. So why don't I show that in parallel? Um, so you know, once we have uh, something fully loaded, uh, if we look at Chrome, what you want to see is private PDB symbols. Um, other thing you want to do, uh, which once this is responsive, is make sure you set a source path. Um, so again, I'm just operating off a um, 
Chromium Canary build. Uh, you know, I went ahead and matched up the version tag and just kind of checked it out locally. Um, possible if you have a, a source uh, server for your build, uh, might just work more automatically. Um, so I can hear my uh, CPU fan spinning. Uh, it's doing something. Um, so let's let's actually look at this one, which is approximately the same scenario. So basically, trace ran. Um, you know, things that are worth noting is you kind of get this time travel trace position, uh, which is highlighted right here. Um, that's just a you know an alias or a you know basically a link to run a, a command in the debugger, and that's the time travel debugging uh, extension. Uh, so if you want to kind of scrub through a trace, um, you know, you can just click it and you'll get right there uh, with a, a new stack. You know, if I want to go backwards, well, that's the start of the trace. Um, if I have, uh, if I had no breakpoints enabled and just told it to go, uh, you know, you can see it very quickly gets all the way to the end of the execution. Uh, and then let's, uh, Keep that going. Um, so basically, you know, I kind of a contrived example, but it can kind of highlight a couple interesting things. So uh, set a, a breakpoint for uh, an early order destructor. So like imagine you know we have a crash. Uh, maybe it's accessing a pointer that's you know nulled out or uh, otherwise garbage. Um, so I'm just going to enable um, those third and fourth breakpoints, uh, and if I tell it to go. Uh, we can actually see this timeline view here. It's kind of showing us where we are in the trace. Uh, and if I keep telling it to go, we'll kind of see uh, it just kind of advancing along. Uh, and then, you know, let's imagine, uh, you know, we actually have um, some issue where, um, you know, bad pointer, and we want to figure out, like, who, who cleared out the pointer or who wrote to it, who stomped over it, uh, whatever the case is. Um, so I could pick basically any pointer in here, uh, which we know would have gone run at some point. And I can do a break on access. Uh, and you do like W4, although this was X64, I, I can be pedantic. Um, this is just saying if I see a, a, a write anywhere in a eight byte range uh, after that address, please break in. Um, and basically, uh, this is kind of the magic of uh, the trace functionality is I can literally say, go backwards uh, and um, you know, we can actually see it got written there. Um, if we actually hang on, let me let me do this. Um, let's make sure we've disabled our other breakpoints and just turn on the new one. Uh, so now, if I tell it to go backwards, um, you know, we can see um, the destructor touching it there, uh, there. Um, so that's let me actually pick a different one. Um, so let's, let's turn on. Uh, those two breakpoints. Um, and that's interesting why I didn't have Chrome symbols. It's possible I move to a, a build. Uh, you know, if we want to debug that, we can, oops, that same noise. Trying to. Live demo nerves. I'm sure someone can uh, recall. Why don't we uh, view the help? Uh, okay, so there's a uh... okay. So something with the uh, the symbols normally turn on uh, noisy symbol loading, and you can kind of get some output of, of what it checked. Um, but this is a day or two older uh, in this other window, so glad I had it up. Um, so let's actually do the same thing, but this time I'm just gonna um, view locals, which is the this pointer. So let's actually just look at when this URL loader got constructed. Maybe we're looking for some info very uh, specific to that. So if I baw 4 w 8 that address, um, you can actually see I had set that up earlier. Uh, we'll disable everything else, uh, enable, go backwards. Uh, and what do you know? Um, you know? We hit that breakpoint, which matches that address for that right uh, at that point. And we can actually see, you know, yep, there's the create loader and start, um, you know, make unique. Uh, and we've got the um, URL loader uh, going there. Um, so, you know, other things like maybe you're not familiar with this code or, or you kind of want to test some theory, like maybe you think something weird happened in the constructor. 
Um, you know, normally you have just um, step into, step over, step out. Um, but with uh, this, uh, you know, we can actually say like, oops, maybe I wanted to look at something uh, back a little bit. You know, I can just do P minus, P minus. Uh, you know, okay, let's actually uh, step into that check. Um, and, you know, basically I can step back out. Um, so it's it's just you know super super powerful. Um, if you're ever kind of running through the scenario of, I have a tough repro, uh, but you know I can definitely catch under the debugger, uh, and I'm stepping, 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 and oops, uh, that was a call uh, that returned an error, uh, and I really want to step into that. Um, this basically means you don't have to restart the repro, don't have to hope and pray, just moving the instruction pointer uh, will get you what you want. Um, you can just kind of go right there. Um, so other kind of cool things to show. Um, so I mentioned the timeline view. Um, so you can basically um, get a view of um, any of these things you want. So like if we wanted to um, look at you know the other um, Perl loader thing, uh, we can do that. If we uh, want to set a uh, memory access check uh, for that same address, and you know, I can just add eight bytes, and you know. See a right to it. Um, it'll basically show up here, and you can even click, right? So what we'll see is uh, a new time travel uh, debugger position uh, right there. Uh, you know, if we we're like, oops, actually, you know, 12 steps back, I want to go back there. Uh, I can click on that. Um, so generally, very powerful. Um, I, you know, I, Historically, this was a Microsoft internal tool, um, so really cool. Uh, you know, the Windows debugger folks have um, released a publicly uh, accessible version, um, and I've personally used this for all kinds of uh, things where I otherwise, you know, would have viewed it as, um, you know, would have been huge amounts of logging um, and probably 10x the effort to root cause um, some kind of subtle, you know, like a. a a task got posted, um, and then something happened later, and and why why didn't uh, it get canceled, or maybe it did get canceled? Um, so with that, I I did mark this session as a somewhere in between thing. Um, so if any folks have questions or um, comments uh, they want to add, uh, would love to hear from other folks. Cool. Well, amazing demo, um, and uh, certainly the uh, the time travel, uh, the the timeline stuff looks super useful. Um, so I uh, meant to ask about uh, platform support. So I guess it's only for x64 only, right? Uh, uh, it should work on x86 as well. I think ARM64. I I don't recall the current support. Um, I, I historically it was lacking, um, but you know I'm not. The Windows debugger team. I, I would be happy if folks have questions uh, for those folks to help uh, relay them. Um, but yeah, x86, x64, Windows 10. Okay, it's uh, wasting a bit longer then. <laughs> uh what is the reason it doesn't work in sandbox? Maybe I missed that. Like, is it trying to write files out in process or something? Uh, yeah, my understanding uh, is it, it has to inject some code, um, and and you know I think normally once the sandbox kicks in, you know if there needs to be a load library uh, or anything uh, like that, it's going to fall over. Um, I imagine there's probably um, some solutions uh, for that, so I'll definitely keep working with the Windows debugger team to see if there's something uh, that can be made more available externally. Um, yeah, if we, if we know roughly what's failing, maybe there's some sort of special command we could introduce to add what's needed. Maybe not. It might not work, but it might be worth a try. Yeah, it's definitely on the radar. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll have to think about where to share um, updates, given you know, I think there probably is broad interest on capabilities. Um, so maybe Chromium Dev uh, might be a nice spot if, if something new does come out to kind of let folks know. Might be nice to have a, a a doc that people can just go back to to uh, see the latest and greatest because I expect that this is fairly um, adapting uh, and will change over time. 
Uh, I mean, potentially. I, uh, this has been a tool that's been available for quite a while um, internally, um, and you know, the core primitives are very similar. But yeah, getting it working on Chromium uh, a little. Yeah, you know, I, I was meaning more how to get it to work with Chrome and the latest version yeah. of Chrome, and when something breaks and this and that. Uh, like yeah. Having a live doc is an opportunity for people to uh, um, keep it up to date. Yeah, no, that sounds good. I, I'm curious if folks think you know a Chromium.org page or or something else. Um, obviously, there's the the slide deck, and uh, uh, if I bounce over to that, if folks want to um, kind of review um, afterwards, um, could kind of <laughs> at least write down you know most of the the steps, and I guess flipping through this, we can figure out if I. Uh, Lost over anything? No, that's that's basically it. Um, so yeah, I, I see Christian kind of pointing to the general debugging on Windows. So yeah, that seems like a probably a good spot. There's debugging information for Linux that's actually committed to the uh, source tree. I think. Um, I don't know why something like this wouldn't fit there as well. Yeah, that's probably even better. I personally love markdown files you happen to run into while you're bouncing around the code versus uh, hoping you get the right result on chromium.org. have a few more minutes. Any other questions, thoughts? I see Alex on, on the... Uh, chat asking if there's a plan for the SDK installer of the preview. Um, that's another thing. I'll make a note. Um, I, I think um, yeah, I, I want to be careful not to speak on behalf of the, the debugger team uh, since I, I don't own it. Um, but I, I do think part of their distribution model is uh, a little easier for them to push updates to the store. Um, but there may be something where uh, the SDK may pick up a, you know, a snapshot copy at some point. So I can check on that. OK, I think we entered the uh, awkward silence phase. Um, so thank you for attending. Um, feel free to reach out to me uh, if you have any uh, questions. And I'll definitely uh, look at um, contributing uh, update or a new markdown file, uh, make this easier for folks to discover. So thanks.